Hey boys and girls, Tony Demore here from Demore Engineering. We're gonna do some testing on our E-Series amplifiers today. I wanted to show you guys on my test bench. But first, a trivia question. The question is, what do I hook up first? Should I connect my RCAs? Should I connect my speaker wires? Should I connect my power? Should I connect my ground? Or should I connect my remote turn on? Congratulations. If you said connect the ground first, you're correct. Here's why guys and ladies. If you don't connect this first and you connect all the other things first, let's say you connect this last, you have power connected, speaker wires don't really matter but then you go to connect your RCAs, on the other end of this RCA, on this shield, is likely your head unit or your DSP or something else that probably has this grounded. And a lot of amplifiers inside have this grounded to the same ground where this ground goes. So if you have this connected, your power, and then you hook this up, it's gonna, the power is gonna go through here and it's gonna go through here and you're gonna go kill your head unit, your DSP, the grounding circuit in the amp, especially on these amps because we have our clean D system which is filtering on the front end, on the RCA end. You can burn that up and it might turn on and function, but it might not have signal or it might have you know, noises or, or other symptoms, especially if you blow it up in your head unit or your DSP, you're gonna have wine and all kinds of things. So do yourselves a favor, Make the ground the first connection. Ground first. Then it doesn't matter what you do after that. Hello again, Tony Demore here from Demore Engineering. Today we've got the Demore Engineering E750.1 monoblock subwoofer amplifier, 750 watt monoblock. We're going to be testing it on my bench which consists of an Audio Precision APX515 audio analyzer. We're gonna use the SMD81 amp dyno as our load bank. Um, we'll be using the Audio Precision for all the measurements, the 81 just for the load. I'll have to manually switch the impedances for some of the testing. But I wanted to, you know, I'm doing these tests. I'm gonna do one on every one of our amplifiers. I've got this all hooked up. Ground wire first, of course. And um, I want to do some tests that uh, maybe you, you won't see in other places. You know, a lot of people can do power testing if they have an amp dyno. And uh, so I want to be able to bring you some other content. So I'm going to do, I'll do power testing, but I'm also going to do things that are important to a good sounding amplifier, such as uh, total harmonic distortion, signal to noise ratio, which is the difference between how loud the amp can be versus how quiet it can be, because that's also important. Um, frequency response and we'll do maximum clean continuous sine wave power unclipped at four two and one so these are some of the things we look at when we're designing amplifiers not all of them if I did all the testing we, we this would be a really long video but just some things that we can relate to and, and some of the things that are that are most important so got it all hooked up I've got the dyno set to four ohms I've got my fluke here just to measure the uh, B plus voltage because I'm going to have to keep an eye on this during the power testing. I want to make sure that we're around 14.4 for each power testing. Uh, that's because that's where our ratings are. And uh, let's jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the amp. Green power lights on. Our first test is going to be the THD plus N ratio. So that stands for total harmonic distortion plus noise. So this is a subwoofer amplifier, so it only plays up to 250 hertz. It's, that's what we call bandwidth limit, limited. The bandwidth is from 20 to, to 250 or, or 10 to 250 or something, we'll see. And um, so total harmonic distortion will be, I'm gonna put a signal in that's within the amplifier's range, its bandwidth, so I'm gonna use 100 hertz. And we're gonna see what else comes out besides 100 hertz. So, um, and th that would all be distortion. So anything that's not the original signal. All right, so let's go. Go ahead and turn on my signal. I have a 100 hertz signal. You can see the sine wave there. There's the THD plus N number there. And now 
a little lesson on this. When people are giving their rating for total harmonic distortion plus noise, like they say the devil's in the details, well the devil here is what is the level, what's the signal level or what's the output level because I could tell you that this has no distortion or you know 0.1% or something, but when? When it's putting out one watt? How about when it's putting out you know, it's rated power. How about when it's putting out 10 watts? How about when it's putting out a tenth of a watt? Whatever. So um, a, a good standard I like to use is half power. So we, this is a, you know, have a forum load now and this amplifier is rated to do 300 watts continuous in the forums. So for half power testing, we're going to run 150 watt continuous sine wave at four ohms and we're going to see what our THD is. So I'm going to look at that number on the dyno and see what it says. Right now it's saying zero, zero watts. Crank this signal up a little bit. Now there's four watts and there's 16, 25, 39, 63, 101. There's 157 watts. So at 157 watts continuous at four ohms, there is our THD plus noise number verifier connections are all good there's our battery voltage 14.5 so that's a fair result it's uh you know could be lower but this is a subwoofer amplifier so in the case of a, of a subwoofer that's a great number that's saying that um you know 99.8 percent accuracy of reproducing the original 100 hertz signal without any other content in there so and you can see as it's warming up a bit that number starting to come down some so 0 0.2 percent thd plus noise all right let's move on to our next test we're going to go to frequency response and we're going to sweep it from 20 hertz to one kilohertz and there you can see it's ruler flat and it starts dropping off after the crossover setting which is the uh, you know the low pass filter on this amplifier so this amplifier and you cannot shut the low pass filter off it's simply adjustable from 250 Hertz down to I believe 50 on this model so that is your low pass filter perfect ruler flat response now the other day I got a question somebody said you know can you turn the infrasonic filter off because this has an adjustable infrasonic filter too which would be the filtering of over here um, you cannot turn it off on this it doesn't have a switch but what you can do is turn the knob all the way down to 10 Hertz if we want to see what that looks like here I can expand our graph let's go ahead and bring this down to 10 Hertz run it again so you can see the infrasonic filter right over here starting to come down so the minus 3 dB is the is the point where you would where you would say it, you know, what the, uh, if you, you say you set your crossover to 100 hertz, that means at 100 hertz it's minus 3 dB. So for that infrasonic filter, the knob says 10. It looks like in reality here we're closer to maybe like 12 or 13. So like 12, 13 hertz, right up to a little bit over 250, like the controls say. So great flat frequency response. Signal to noise ratio. Again, this is the how loud can it be versus how quiet it can be? This is an automated test. I'm gonna hit go. It's going to ramp the signal up to just that clipping and then it's gonna shut the signal off and mute it and it's gonna see what the difference is between how big it is when it's clipping and how little the residual noise is. And that ratio is gonna be our answer. So 103.4 dB. That is a good result, especially for a Class D amplifier. So there's AB amplifiers that are just barely at those levels. So nice and quiet. And let's do some power testing. So, and there we are. So we got 322 watts at 14.42 volts. That's a great result. 322.8, the amp dyno says 326. Good numbers. Once again, it's rated at 300. Let's go ahead and take it to the two ohm test. Um, two ohms, okay. Reset this. Okay, here we go.
565 watts into two ohms. 14.34, so there's a little bit of headroom left there. Could go a little bit higher if I adjusted it, but I'm not going to. And the rating here is 500 by one. So 10% underrated, great. Let's go to the 1% or uh, one ohm test next. And let's go with the one ohm test. We're on the right screen. 885 again, so 885 watts at one ohm, continuous sine wave power, 14.32. So again, it's probably 900 if I adjusted that up to 14.4. Um, and you know, our rating is 750 in here, obviously. So great result. There we go. Who wants to see if it'll hit 900 if I adjust it up a little bit to 14.4? I, I kind of do. Let me, let me, let's see, we need about eight. 80 hundredths of a volt. Let's see, just give it a little bit. Why not? Run it. Eight eighty eight at fourteen thirty five. A little more sauce. There we are, 901 watts, 14.46. Well, there we go. It's all fun and games anyways, right? So that is the E750.1, great little monoblock amp. Let's do another one.